Hello and welcome to this demonstration video where I'll show you how to configure a Brodersen RTU32 running the T5 binding protocol. The T5 binding protocol is an event-driven protocol based on the TCIP network for exchanging real-time data among runtime systems in a network. In this case, the runtime system is a Brodersen RTU32. The protocol is designed for very low network traffic, which again ensures high performance. Because the protocol is event-driven, the value of a variable is only sent to the network when it changes together with a date and timestamp. The protocol is based on a public subscribe model, which means that each system may publish some variables on the networks, which again other systems in the network can subscribe to. Now I'll show you how to set up the T5 binding protocol. First I'll start by opening the Stratum Workbench. Here I'll add two projects for my RTUs. Just select this destination of the project. Here RTU1, structured text, the IP address of the RTU, like this. And the next project, 2. and release build, like this. Now I have made two projects. I'll start by defining the variables which RTU2 will publish to the network. In this case, I'll be using the digital inputs and the first analog inputs on the RTU32. So I'll start by, start by adding my variables. Digital inputs, module 0, boolean, Digital input one two ah. number five, six, and the last digital input, seven. Then I'll add the first analog input. Here I can set the, when the, how much the value should change before sending an event to the network. In this case, I'll just leave it with every change. So you'll see how fast it is. Then OK. This is an unsigned integer. Now I'll bind the variables to the hardware in the RTU32. So we'll start by this. The next one, bit number one. and three Seven. Now the last one is the analog input. Here I'll choose the analog input profile, the scaling, so now I have to find the variables that RTU2 will publish to the network. Then I'll go to my First RTU, define my variables. 
So we can put in RTU, we call it RTU1 DI. to input Then this last one, RTU1, analog input, and I'll type on sign integer. Now I'll also I'll add a time stamp of the type time, and I'll add a connection status, and this is a double int. Now I'll start by binding the variables. In this case, I'll open the global binding editor. Just say yes. Of course, just add here. Insert math port. Here I have to type in, we'll call RTU2 like this, and the address, 45. So, save Global Binding Editor. Select my two, how to use, like this. So, you can see for the first one, there's no public variables. For the second RTU, there is the variables that I have defined in the project. So I'll start here. We'll have a can just expand this so you can see error status, date stamp, timestamp. So for example, I'll have here I'll bind this variable to the connection status. This one to R to U, digital input zero, etc. See, uh, made a small mistake. This should be five, six, and seven, and the analog input. And in this case, I will just have the use the timestamp here, so you'll see. So now I've done the configuration. So I'll just compile, download the two projects to my RTUs. Now we have finished. Then I'll just show you that I'll go online on the this one. I'll go online on the first RTU. Download project. So now we can see all variables are false. So I'll start by, for example, changing the analog input. See just as fast as I'm changing it, you will see on the other RTUs, I'll start by the digital inputs. See, the timestamp is changing. So you will see, immediately we have the event. And then for example, I can remove the, the LAN connection. The connection stage will change to one. This means that the first LAN connection is lost. And I'll put it in again. See, we'll have it up running again. So, and I'll also show you how easy it is to make this redundant. For example, if you have two uh, separate network segments, you can use this as redundancy. So you have the two LAN ports on the 
Article 32, we'll just go into this for the first one. We'll just slash and then the IP address like this. Compile and download. So now I have added redundancy. Still working. Then I'll take the first LAN interface out. See, we still got the values, the connection, so it's running on the second LAN card. Just plug it in again. Changing to zero again, we have then the, the second LAN card all disconnect. Still running, we have a, another error code. So this was how easy it is to make it redundant. Thank you. This was all for now. Goodbye.